Hello, hello everybody, and something I keep seeing pop up on my Facebook groups, or the book of faces, I like to call it sometimes, is what happens when you mix different kinds of colored shrimp. Now I've done somewhat on this topic before about my Skittle shrimp, and the thing is, not everyone has all these different tanks, not everyone has dozens of tanks to keep a shrimp in every line. Most people just have, if you only have one tank. And say you've got blue shrimp and you're getting bored just looking at blues. You, you don't have the ability or it's not feasible or whatever. It's not, you're just going to have the one tank or only have a couple tanks and you want to mix it up a little bit. And they're worried about getting wilds or less desirable shrimp now. No matter what you do, the best practice is to keep your shrimp lines and colors separate. You're always going to have better results, but there are a few times, like I just mentioned, maybe you just you're not trying to breed or anything. You don't care about mixing them up, but you just want to keep having the most pretty shrimp you can with the least amount of wilds. Now, I personally don't mind wilds, but I understand that they're not all that desirable for some people. So I'm going to talk about what colors are best to mix, and you can have more predictability. On what you can expect to happen so you're less likely likely to get real bad wilds so this is my skittles tank and what this is is my call tank for all my lines all the every single neo caridinia line i have the ones who ain't quite good enough to be in the line they all come in here to live and then they all breed and do whatever they want and you can see there's all kinds of mix of colors in here and some of these, there's a lot, a lot of really low greenish looking shrimp in here. Low grade greens. And I'll explain why I end up with that later on in the video. And then I'm going to end this video on something I'm going to do as my own breeding project and why I'm going to do that. So stick around and find out all that I'm going to talk about. Because I think this will be one of my better videos because I see this question asked time and time again and this is what happens in this video right here you get all kinds of different colors now the more colors that mix the less quality you end up with but you get all kinds of cool wild outrageous things too so I like doing this and then I also want to talk about <coughs> controlled mixing and that's what this video is about and the project I'm gonna take on here I'm gonna start in this video so this is the neo caridinia family tree you can see this chart it's available all kinds of different places online so as you can see there are different shrimps that are different that are related to each other and different shrimp derive from other lines so i'm going to talk about which ones of these are best to mix together so if you already have one of these shrimp what kind of shrimp should you put with your shrimp that you already have and what you can expect now I can talk about this from personal experience and some things that I hope to see true in my future breeding project I'm going to talk about here in a few minutes okay so starting over here on the left side we have the <coughs> different subspecies now there are some debate on the validity of this chart but for the most part for what we're trying to cover here it's good enough so over here on the left side, we have a different subspecies. These are the Neocaridinia palmata, and those are your blue pearls, white pearls, and this is where your snowballs come from. So generally speaking, these are best to be left on their own and not to be mixed with the others, as far as I have found, because you don't get a whole lot of reliable results when mixing those with others. They're okay so this group here is the first group that i would consider mixing i have this group circled because it has all the yellows so what this chart means is it starts off with a wild yellow then it says yellow then it says yellow neon then it says yellow sakura and that's just refining yellows down to higher grades is all that means and over here you have your orange and orange really is our derivative of oranges and then below orange oranges will turn into green and then darker green 
and then you can get green jades from either yellows or oranges and I can confirm that because I've had yellow shrimp and I have orange shrimp and I have pulled green shrimp out of both lines now I, ca I can't say what happens if you mix like a green and a yellow or a green and an orange or an orange and a yellow because I've never purposely done that before but these shrimp are all closer this is this circle of shrimp are pretty closely related and I think when I talked about having a bunch of lower grade green shrimp in my Skittles tank this is where it comes from because I have green jades that I call a lot out of I don't have yellows anymore but I do have a whole whole bunch of oranges so my guess is when you mix oranges and greens you get a whole lot of low grade greens so that's something but you're I think you're probably still going to get some wilds if you mix any of these colors together but again you're probably always going to get some wilds when you mix different colors but we're talking about less likelihood of bad colors popping up and so this is going to be a more predictable group to mix than say you know if any from any of the other groups I know this group of shrimp is close related the next group we're going to look at is your reds now you start off with your wild cherry then you got your your next cherry then you got your fire red then you got your painted fire red and then from that you have red reallys and then from that you have blue reallys and then from that you get blue jellies so this is going to talk about my next project I want to do I want to start some I want to have some of the blue red reallys that have the red tail and the red head and the blue middle so I'm going to be, and some red reallys which is the clear metal so my plan to come up with those is mix some of my reds with my blue jellies so basically essentially what we're doing is we're devolving the blue jellies because you already get some of the little so the few calls I do get from my blue jellies they're shrimp with red on their face or red on their tail and that's what blue jellies will devolve into if you don't have the best blue jelly line they'll turn into the blue red reallys with the red face red tail and the blue middle I want to get those on purpose and make them stable because I've always thought those are really cool I'd have them pop up in my skittles line in my skittles tank from time to time I want to do that on purpose and I want to have a good red relay tank as well so I want to start this project eventually I'm going to have three tanks where I'm going to separate them into but I don't have those tanks right now so now I'm going to put them into a different tank right now in one of my guppy tanks and let them mix up and then when they start getting the ones I want I want to separate those into new tanks that I'll be starting soon and you can see there's red relays and blue relays down here at the bottom and those also go into and come from black roses so we'll talk about the blues and blacks and bloody marys here in a bit so if you want to mix reds with something blue jellies and blue re or yeah blue jellies and blue red reallys and something in this group would be a good candidate so and that's what i want to try to do that's my next breeding project and i'll show you what i'll show you that here at the end of the video so then here on the, all the way on the right side we have what takes up a lot and I guess I should have circled the bottom red really and the bottom blue really because I'm going to tell you how I have experience with this so I used to have some black rose the only shrimp I ever tried to get from imports and it didn't go so well I got beautiful beautiful black shrimp but then when they started breeding they were all over the place so much so I couldn't get them stable and it was just frustrating but I did end up having a super super awesome call tank come out of it and that's that's what my skittles tank baseline was years ago when I decided to start putting all my calls in one tank because that tank started off as my black rose were throwing deep 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 dark blue shrimp they're beautiful blues and so I started catching out all the super dark blues and putting them in their own tank. But when I done that, I got red reallys, blue reallys, carbon reallys, blue carbon reallys, lots of beautiful, beautiful blue shrimp, 
the blue dreams and then I even ended up getting some the chocolates and Bloody Marys as well so I can tell you that all these shrimp are all related in some way and I would still get wilds out of the mix but I consistently got blue black and all the crazy cool reallys and some Bloody Marys so and chocolates it was there it was a pretty cool is a good mix so if you're gonna mix blues and blacks and stuff like that you'll end up getting all these eventually if you just let them go because I know I did and so mixing blues and blacks is a good option so now I got this open up the you got your first group which is your yellows your oranges and your greens and those are all good and you to mix the well you still get wilds you're always going to get wilds when you mix them different even if you don't mix them different if you just have an unstable line you're still going to get wilds pop up even if you keep all the same colors together then you get your reds and blue jellies and the red reallys and stuff like that and then the last group that we just talked about the black roses blues chocolates and bloody marys so that covers the groups so if you're gonna mix your different colors then I suggest stay within the same group of shrimp because then it's going to be more predictable and you can have more of an idea of what you're gonna get so let's go on to finish the video with my breeding project I want to try to do so you may be asking why are you gonna go through all the effort to mix different shrimp when there's already the really you want out there well, because I'm crazy when it comes to add new shrimp. I have not added any new shrimp for years because I don't want any nasties. So I'd rather try to create my own and it'll be fun. Okay, so we got about 15 or 20 reds out of my lower grade, my lowest grade red tank. But I still selected pretty good red shrimp here. I got mostly females of these guys. And then for blue jellies, I got about 15 or 20 of these. And I tried to select mostly males for these guys to make the process more efficient. There's some females in there and there's a few males in here, but it's, it's probably like 80% females in here and 80% males in here. So now we're gonna take them to the new tank oh yeah we're gonna have glare city here but this is my mad scientist tank with guppies and i thought i'd make it fun and add some mad scientist shrimp stuff to it so first we're going to put in the reds now well, the guppies will eat some of the baby shrimp those are pretty good red girls for being on my lowest grade red tank Oh, there's still more in there. Come on. All right. Back to having shrimp in this tank. This tank hasn't had any shrimp in quite some time. All right. I have been going. These guys have been getting fin bendazole like crazy, the guppies in here. So now I think they're pretty safe. They're pretty cleared out. I'm not going to have to retreat with guppy parasite meds in quite a while. And now we've got the blue jellies. Mostly boys, I think. Mostly. Did we get them all? Okay. Now this should be a pretty fun tank to watch. The reds and blue jellies, I'm excited to see what happens. And hopefully we get a bunch of the blue reallys with the red tail, red face. We're basically devolving our blue jellies on purpose. And then we'll also get some red reallys out of here, I hope. But eventually I'm going to be setting up some new tanks for this. But right now, this is what we're doing. And again, you might, like you said, there's already these shrimp available, but I've never done this. And... I'm really crazy about adding new shrimp. As a breeder, I have to try to limit what I could add. So, I have not added any new shrimp in over three years. And I like to keep it that way. 
So I'd like to keep it that way and not risk any shrimp nasties coming into my tanks. So we're going to let these guys live with the guppies. That one's a really good. That's like a fire red right there. Several of these are really nice. Blue jellies and their reds together. But hopefully, like I said, we'll get some of the blue red reallys and the red reallys. And we'll have other tanks to separate those into eventually. But right now, this tank is gonna this tank, like I said, it had it hasn't had any shrimp in it, and I like having shrimp in my tanks, even in my guppy tanks. So Hopefully we get some cool stuff popping up in this tank. So that's the deep dive into shrimp genetics. And if you want to mix colors, those are your best options. And this is something I've been wanting to do. And now I'm doing it. And I'll share updates with this tank on how the shrimp are doing and what kind of shrimp we get popping out of here. And I'm excited. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.